We have our special guest in the studio, Kelly. Aloha, welcome back. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Aloha, Ohana. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having me. We had some good response after our, it was two weeks ago, we had a, your, your first time on the air. Mm-hmm. And the subject matter is, of course, something pretty much universal. And uh, today we are speaking on depression. Mm-hmm. And what else? Yeah, we're going to just talk a little about how to heal and understand and overcome depression, working with pain, and how we can just come to a healthier and happier lifestyle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, just for you guys out there who don't know me, my name is Kelly Noel, and I'm an intuitive healer, intuitive coach, and I help you activate your power to self heal. Everyone is capable of healing themselves and overcoming any obstacle, any circumstance in your life. It's only us that are in our own way. <laughs> yes. As the prayer in the sweat lodge goes. Mm. So we feel helpless uh, at times just living in this world, news, things we see around or hear about. It's very depressing. Mm, mm -hmm. You you feel kind of helpless, like you're watching a movie and you have no say in the flow. Uh, Yet, you are the writer, the script writer, the actor, the director. You are it. Mm -hmm. And yet, we externalize our power. Heaven is over there. God's up there. And and so we become powerless and depressed. I think that's the sum of it, isn't it? Well, that's a huge aspect, Cameron. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to look at that as the spiritual aspect or energetic reasons that we do fall into depression is that we're giving our power away. Mm -hmm. And if we understand that we're pure consciousness and whole into ourselves, we really begin to realize that we have all of the tools, all of the knowledge and wisdom right within us. Then if we disown that, It's going against the truth in our own body and our soul, our whole system responds to it. Mm -hmm. Depression and pain is actually a guiding post and really everything in our lives benefits us because it's always showing us where we're at in our Mm -hmm. own system. Mm -hmm. Are we giving our power away? That's not going to make us feel good. No, no. Are we claiming our power? That's going to make us feel really good and really strong in life. Like you wake up with a whole different feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, Could it be food related? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So those were the two main points um, I would love to dive into during the show is the spiritual causes and our diet. Um, Those really two are the main factors (laughs) that lead us down a slippery slope to feeling lethargic and apathetic and just uninspired and heavy. Heavy. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Which um, I was speaking with a friend about uh, intestinal flora, mm-hmm. which absorbs basically all the food. And, and one of the things I love to eat myself is bread. Mm. Many people are having breakfast now. We don't want to ruin it for you. But gluten basically is like a glue, right? Mm-hmm. And it sticks to you. So when it's stuck, we feel heavy. Mm-hmm. And we can't absorb the food, so we feel undernourished, even though we're eating a lot of food. And we feel kind of low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's good to understand that our body is so sensitive, actually, that we are sensitive to the energies around us, the people around us, Mm. circumstances, and the food, thoughts, and feelings that are going into our system. And that in our guts are actual neurons as well and receptors that are sending signals to our brain, just as there are in our hearts. And we have a hard time processing processed food, (laughs) digesting that kind of food. So one of the main things when you are depressed or want to avoid just daily depression when you shovel all this junk down you is avoiding quick fixes like these happy highs, which is in carbohydrates and white breads and cookies and sugars and alcohol. Coffee. We reach for these things thinking they're going to give us emotional comfort or a little boost, but they really bring us deep down inside. It takes more energy to break down the meat than the meat originally is giving us. So Mm. it's energy minus. Um, Then the mind says, no, this cup of coffee is what I need to really wake up. And so your psyche is very powerful and says, yeah, coffee is good. Mm -hmm. One cup, okay. Two cup, maybe okay. But then five, six, seven, all through the day. I mean, it goes 
of the scale and then of course it's the imbalances cause other imbalances and other so things. diet is so important but I think it's best that we really start with coming back into the spiritual matter and energetics because really everything mm -hmm, begins mm -hmm. at the subtle and energetic levels yes. and when we are in alignment with ourself and our spirit when we actually develop the ability to listen to our body it's going to guide us into what foods to eat and how to actually move ourselves out of depression or get us out of this pain or heal any kind of cancer or ailment that's in our body. Mm -hmm. So it's good to understand where we've gotten disconnected from that and how to get back in the yeah. signals and the messages that the body teaches yeah. us. I know a lot of our Ohana like to get high. <laughs> and I've noticed when I fast, I am the highest mm. when I'm empty. Mm like a water fast or something, nothing to, you know, punish yourself and, but just, just not eating for a couple, three, four days. It's amazing. Mm. The clarity that comes, of course, the drowsiness and everything. If you're working, it's difficult. Then there's the other things like the master cleanse with maple syrup and cayenne pepper and lime and which gives you some energy. You still can't go, you know, do heavy work, but just fasting isn't mm -hmm. it's so simple. It's just, just stopping eating, suddenly it clears itself. <laughs> well, this even, yeah, intermittent fasting, just mm. going one day, mm. um, does wonders for the body system. There's a great saying that fasting brings the body into alignment and brings the soul, the mind, in, and the body under mm. control or under alignment, whatever the word is, for with our spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's our truth. Mm -hmm. So... I'd love just to share with you guys that I experienced a severe depression in my adolescence and just a gray, hollow, empty world, just void of everything. Laughter just echoed into nothingness and what was the point of living? I definitely tried to go the other route. Mm -hmm. And when I went to therapists, they never once asked me, what's your day like? What, what, what is it to wake up in the morning? What foods do you eat? What activities do you? They never even asked me, what brings you joy? What, do, what would you love to do that makes you happy? We dove into every problem and every negativity and just continuously focused on that and brought up all childhood memories. Yes. And within weeks, we already wanted to put me on medication. There was no talk about diet. There was no talk about exercise. There was no talk about my feelings and, and uh, cultivating higher positive emotions and well-being in the system. And it was my blessed little spirit that <laughs> has guided me yeah. to heal myself and move into these more positive realms. And. It's this, it's listening to our self. You are going to either feel good taking an action or you are going to feel bad taking an action. Just these subtle emotions are uh, telling you if you are following your spirit and all of your body and channels are opening to synchronicity and to flow and to your joy, or if you're not, and you're gonna start to feel bad and heavy if you don't. Your body literally constricts and it cuts off this flow. And then those emotions get suppressed in the body. They begin to build and they create their own toxicity, their own pain, which can then lead to, I feel bad about myself. I wanna go drink alcohol or I wanna just go eat all of this food and we get into <clears throat> these patterns. What was your trigger? I mean, for to shift. Yeah, I guess I had said it, you know, as a part of me has been very blessed. I've had a very strong spirit that has just known a certain degree of health without even experiencing it yet. Just knowing that I wasn't fully alive and that I could be and yes. that whatever I was doing was just not working. Yeah, yeah. And I just dawned on me that this medication had actually started to make me feel much worse because it wasn't until I was on the medication that I actually tried to commit suicide and that I was just spiraling and spiraling down. Mm. And so it just really hit me one day and allowed me to realize I need to get off of this. And I myself alone, without my doctors, without telling my mother, mm -hmm. sorry mom, mm -hmm. began to take myself off my medications. And 
that in itself is such a process. So we have to realize that every thought we're thinking, every emotion, every food, and every medication has a chemical balance that's coming into our body that is altering and deeply affecting every cell and atom in our body. So if you are on medications now and and begin to come off, it's so important to do it slowly while you're meeting it with a really healthy diet that's full of fruits and vegetables, sunlight and exercise. Some of these meds are horrific. Very intense, yes. I mean, it does one thing, but it gives you 10 other side effects, which I guess if you're that sick of one condition, then you're going to risk some other things. But if the body can heal itself, Mm -hmm. why go to an outer source? Mm -hmm. Now, we need each other's help and guidance. That's why we're talking on the air. First of all, we'd like to say we don't know uh, the way there. We're just experiencing things in our own lives and basically sharing our own story, our personal story, because that's where... It's coming from the heart Mm -hmm. and not hearsay or I read this somewhere and it I know it works, you know, but I haven't tried it myself because I'm too lazy, Mm -hmm. you know, or or too programmed, you know. So I'm going to go to a piece of music, have a drink of water, answer the phones and uh, come back and continue with our conversations. Ohana, you're tuned in to Kauai Community Radio. This is the program called The Oasis. My name is Cameron. I'm speaking with Kelly. The subject is depression and pain and, of course, the opposite of it, joy and vibrant health. Having a live interview here with Kelly, the subject is depression and pain. Just before we go back into our conversation, I'd like to send a prayer to our Ohana on top of Mauna Kea, prayers for Mauna Kea and the people who are making a stand. It's not been a short while, 300 years or more of colonial, then religious, then military takeover. It's got to change for the better someday. May that day be today. And also on a happy note, a belated happy birthday to your beautifulness, Dalai Lama, your holiness. Last Monday, he's a leader in exile for years, still spreads aloha, leads us into galaxies of love and forgiveness. The world, our world, is so much more homey with you in it. Thank you. Your Holiness, Father, Brother, Friend, Model of Humanity, may you live long and be healthy and strong. So one day you may return home to your home and begin the new age of the planet. I love you, Dalai Lama, my living ancestor. Mm. Happy birthday. I want to just hug him for hours. <laughs> you know, what a, what a man, what I'll a man. Bring everyone right into joy. Yeah, yeah. Let's all leave it in a joyful, I mean, bring it back to a joyful place. Because we can. Mm -hmm. But these patterns we carry that are so stubborn, uh, how do we bless it away? Mm. Or bless it in, or whatever it is, embrace it into oblivion. (laughs) (laughs) Embrace it's a perfect transmutation. I don't know how to say it, but I'm so tired, you know. Well, one, everyone that's listening right now, we're talking about depression from severe, chronic, to just this regular depression that can creep in and out of our lives, to just a general apathy and lack of inspiration. Each and every one of us can be waking up every morning excited, so excited for the blessings and possibilities, exactly, so eager to meet their day with energy because they know who they are, they have their purpose, and they're living their truth. So when we deny this truth by disconnecting with our spirit, disconnecting with the planet, we naturally get depressed. Hawking's, David Hawking's yes. has a beautiful quote that depression is a natural response to the desecration of life. Ohana, we are one family, one consciousness. 
If you're a mother and your child isn't feeling well, you don't feel well. If your husband's not feeling well, you don't feel well. If your friends aren't feeling great, you don't feel that great. We are constantly yep. impacted by our environment and are impacting our environment. When we see the news and there's kids, children, mothers, families, young men getting brutalized, going to war, it does not make us feel good. Mm -mm. In general, though, we don't know how to handle these emotions and we suppress them. We fall into indifference. We say, what power could I possibly have? You know, how could I possibly change this? And it doesn't make us feel good. We numb ourselves out. There's a lot of us that are going through life absolutely numb, mm -hmm. thinking that is just that this is life. But no, I'm telling you, it gets so much juicier and brighter and happier. And one of these reasons, you just said it, Cameron, is how do we bless ourselves out of it? We can pray in any and every moment. It's not a religious thing. It's not a dogmatic thing. It's coming into your heart and just feeling and choosing through your thoughts and emotions to grab a hold of what inspires you, to grab a hold of the planet coming together, to grab a hold of that vision and seed that lights you up, that gets you burning and excited and pray for it and feel it and call it in. I pray that all of the listeners on this show right now that are in need of support, that are feeling uninspired and lack in their lives, that they begin to feel their cells, that you right here, right now are feeling your whole body enlivening mm -hmm. with life and light and your own power, your own joy, your own memory of what you want to create in this world, flooding your system and rising you to go jump in a cold shower, take a stretch, have a green smoothie, hug a friend, do something beautiful. Cry, a have a good exactly. cry. Connect in with yourself and love, love, love yourself better. Well, that's a great way to bring it up to 11 o'clock on this 12th day of July 2015. On a remote outpost, human outpost in the middle of the ocean, mm -hmm. Kauai, our home of our hearts. I came up with this line today that the biggest journey we make in life is from our heads to our heart. And uh, I want to thank Hanalei Gourmet and our underwriters, um, who everybody who helps us stay on the air. Thank you very much. Bless you. May your businesses prosper and your families be healthy, and hey, everybody just benefit from our radio station. The Hanalei Gourmet, where they serve lunch and dinner seven days a week in the old schoolhouse in Hanalei Town, is proud to underwrite Kauai Community Radio. Edible Hawaiian Islands is a subscription-based, advertiser-supported print and digital magazine, the only James Beard award-winning food and drink magazine in the state of Hawaii. Edible Hawaiian Islands Digital Magazine may be enjoyed at ediblehi.com. Lewis and Eddie Soltron Construction, 639-4836, building quality on Kauai for over 25 years. New custom homes, remodeling, and repairs. Exclusive dealer for Talias Hurricane Roll-Down Shutters Protection for your home. Lewis and Eddie Soltron Construction, 639-4836, or soltronconstruction.com. Mahalo for the information. Uh, and uh, Surf Report, high advisory for the surf on the east facing shores today. Haena has one to three, Hanalei one to two, Kealia and Lidgate four to eight feet, Poipu two to four, Salt Pond and Kekaha one to three. So the remnants of uh, a couple of giant storms passing on the equator to the south of us. Just want to give thanks to Amakua, our holy ancestors, holy protectors of these islands who continuously protect us the living beings of Kauai uh, uh, these storms could have easily just veered north and and you know the story would be very different than just being wet and humid so always room for giving thanks and always room in our hearts to really be grateful because we 
don't need a storm to feel small. I personally already feel very small, <laughs> <laughs> smaller than a dot, don't have any claims, and basically going through life questing this personal liberation mm. from the program to the authentic self. And it, it's quite a, you know, travelogue. It's quite a task. It is indeed. And at the same time, it's so simple. Of what you're saying is, you know, if you humble yourself, life won't have to humble you. <laughs> and giving thanks, one of the easiest techniques to begin to feel joy and lightness in your body, right? Everything is a vibration and a consciousness. And feeling heavy and miserable is very low. And like attracts like, and we can yep. get stuck in these patterns. Yep. When we give thanks, we can actually like rocket fuel to drive us upwards and remember all of the blessings and this journey to find our authentic self which naturally brings us so much peace happiness excitement bliss really comes from the breath just as as soon as i was saying it you start taking in a deep breath it's unconscious it's effortless the body knows how to do it breathing deep into your belly quieting that mind and you can even say my heart is opening right now mm -hmm. i'm moving into my heart and just sit there and be there we have this information we've heard about meditating and yoga for years yeah. but the question is is how often are we actually doing it and how deep are we really going when we're in there are we sitting there with our stories or are we really allowing our whole mind to surrender our whole personality and story, worries, drama, this person did that. Can I actually find Ho'oponopono, move into forgiveness and let go of all these things to simply be and feel this presence, this presence that is whole yeah. and just so spectacularly and, uh, yummy. Children feel it. Mm -hmm. I just remember that we forgot to mention if somebody just turned their radio on right now you're listening to Kauai Community Radio we're speaking Cameron and Kelly are speaking on the subjects of depression and pain and the transformation of the this human being that we are experiencing ourselves as I was laughing because as you were speaking I remember the Rumi piece that says we pray for long hours when we are together in a group but when we are alone we pray really short and run for the halva, you know, or, or the sweets or something. It's, uh, mm. it's, it's like a facade, like a new age facade of like me because I'm so good. I'm so, you know, caught up with the, but it's become really old mm. because it doesn't do anything. So oh, I say there's two facets to that is that. Yes, sometimes we get caught up in fads. I'm supposed to be doing this and it's the next most popular thing. And we like to move in herds. It makes us feel safe. It mm -hmm. keeps our ego identity fitting in with the norm. And all of society, governments, their school systems have been designed to keep us at average. They actually teach at an average line rather than our highest potential. Mm -hmm. But there's another aspect is that when we get together, it's actually a lot easier sometimes to feel a presence and to meditate and you're willing to let go of your own needs to meet the peace of the group. So maybe it was set that you are going to meditate for 45 minutes and everyone's an electromagnetic being giving mm -hmm. off their own peace and connection in that moment. It creates a very amplified field. But when we're alone, uh-oh, all of those emotions and <laughs> thoughts that we've been suppressing, that we've been hiding behind and watching TV and Let's doing open mindless a activity is going to come bubbling up <laughs> and we want to run for the hills. Our ego is designed to avoid pain and it wants superficial gain. It wants the easy fix as quick as possible all the time. And we actually have to teach ourselves and retrain that 
going to face the pain is only momentary. It is so momentary and it's actually so much better than we actually think. And when we go into it, it begins to alleviate and completely release. And that's when you get your insights of wisdom, your healing, and your your integration and wholeness into that authentic self. Now, let's respect pain also because some of the pain, some of the people are experiencing is beyond limit, beyond description. Mm -hmm. Some pains are unbelievable. I mean, you panic. You can't even think straight. Mm. So uh, with respect to that teacher called pain, uh, we don't want to undermine it, but Mm -hmm. nevertheless, you're right. Uh, I'd love to share a really deep experience, Ohana. I've been molested and raped in my life, um, which led to a part of my depression. And... I accepted that it happened, but I also didn't. I never looked at it, and I would not go there. And I spent years on drugs, heroin, cocaine, alcohol, you name it, I was there. And I couldn't really necessarily get into that pocket. And when I did, it was it was this grief that crawled and gnawed and just went everywhere in my whole system. Like it was ripping apart my flesh. But we can do it in baby steps. And as I did begin to move into this pain and just cry and scream and let it out, there was only so much of it. And what I realized when I got in there was that it was still just myself. It's still just a form of consciousness that it couldn't actually hurt me. Again, it takes a lot of training and perseverance. I in no way say coming out of depression is an easy snap of the fingers. It can be as easy as following your joy. But if we can't find that reason to heal, if we can't get inspired to say, holy crap, I deserve a way better life than this right now. I deserve to love myself and be loved and have healthy and happy relationships then we can get stuck in a deep, deep spiral. And it is worth it to call on your brothers and sisters. Call on me for this person that can help ignite your flame and hold your hand. But it's always going to be you. You're going to do the self-healing. You're going to find these pockets. And that is going to empower you to such a high degree. Well, thanks for sharing with us some of those um, uncomfortable facts. Mm -hmm that people, a lot of people go through in their lives when they just put it on the back burner, in the back file, and just don't go there. Why go there, you know? It, so it does become, once you deal with it, a part of your makeup. Like, we are supposed to be polar beings packed with paradox, and somehow the soul creates these situations to learn from. Absolutely. But horrific situations. Yeah. And... and, and which could really dent a personality mm-hmm. for life. Mm-hmm. And you could that just be a victim for the rest of your life. Very powerful, yeah. Well, and victimhood is one of the main consciousness that leads to depression. Yeah. It's very hard for us to say, to be responsible for mm-hmm. our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I take responsibility for every action that's occurred, including that molestation and rape. And in the sense that I understand very firmly that this is a planet for spiritual growth and karmic purification. We are very high, very intelligent beings of consciousness that came here individually with very unique patterns, choosing very specific experiences to go through. Everything that you have experienced, everything that you are experiencing in your life is manageable, that you have the power to handle it. It is not more than you can handle. It is not going to destroy you. You've asked for this. You have the strength to overcome it. And it is when we avoid that pain, if we choose to not look at it, which can, of course, lead into addictions, um, bad, poor emotional choices that just spiral us out and lead us getting disconnected, heavy, dense, and just dying, you know, in aches and pains. Yeah, which is worse than dying. And so our pains are our friends. They are guiding us in what to look at, where to listen, where to focus. And then it's just beginning to explore those realms gently, safely, 
Lovingly. But I just again, I really want to say that no matter where you are or what's going on, you have the ability to overcome these circumstances. Nothing is too much for you to handle. You have all of the wisdom and the strength. And when you decide that for yourself, when you say, no, I am the victor of my life, when you claim responsibility, that means that you've chosen to own all of the wisdom and power that you need to heal the situation. But even when, saying oh, it, yeah, even saying mm-hmm. it helps. Absolutely. Just the sound. It's consciousness, it's yeah. a vibration, it's going into your cells, just like a, a drama or that food goes into your cells. Mm-hmm. And you're reshifting the focus of it, the vibration of it, the healing of it. Yeah, yeah. Kelly, I have a track of music lined up, sent to us by Tom Miller from Down Under. Unless you've already moved to your new location, Tom, thank you for the gifts. It's a beautiful song, and I heard it last week, but I put it aside so I listen to it with you and our audience, of course. It's called Hear Me, Great Spirit. Let's go to that music and come back. may be caused by adverse conditions. Fear of the future or a sense of hopelessness regarding the present. Mostly, however, we get sad because of the actions of others. When we are sad, we need to unburden ourselves. We may wish to speak to a trusted friend, and this is good. However, Prayer to the Creator is far more effective. Because Great Mystery knows our hearts better than we know them ourselves, there is no need to hide anything. We can tell the Creator all. When we learn to do this, the attitudes and reactions of others become less important. Sometimes sadness makes us cynical. We begin to doubt that there are truly good people around us. Praying to the Creator helps us regain our perspective. If we look for the good in others, we will find it. We may not find perfection, but we will find sincerity and good intentions. Focus on the goodness you see in others and reflect it back upon them. Some time ago, my youngest son had a parakeet. The bird was like one of the family. One day, I was very sad because my father-in-law had died and I had loved him dearly. The bird, who had never paid me much attention, picked a grape from a bowl, flew over and placed it in my mouth. I was amazed at this. The bird knew that I was sad and, in its own way, was trying to lighten my burden. Till the day that little bird died, I loved it with all my heart. I learned a great lesson from this. The lesson I learned was that we do not need fellow humans to make us happy.
It's called Hear Me, My Creator and Guide by Native American Coyote. That's all I have on that. Thank you again, Tom Miller from Australia or presently from the U.S. I hope all goes well for you, Tom, the changes you're bringing. Um, Kelly, thanks for coming. Mm. Thanks for being here and opening your heart and sharing stories and just being about the restoration of the family and ourselves mostly. Mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that piece. That was really, really beautiful for guys that were listening. I mean, that's it. Give it to the Creator. That's the most powerful thing that any human being can do is find that still point that all of our pain, suffering, wisdom, joy, desires, needs, they're in our heart constantly circulating, vibrating within us. Mm. We can sit and wait on the Creator, on Source, and send those prayers out that help does come. We need to be quiet enough and aware enough to see that help and love ourselves enough to take action towards that help. Uh, It also just reminded me too that no one else is responsible for our happiness. Your husband taking out the trash isn't going to make you happy. Your partner spending more time with you isn't going to make you happy. (coughs) You know, these are superficial, egotistical things. And even this, guys, oh my goodness, even if the waves are there or not there, these things aren't going to make us happy or sad, truly. It comes from deep within us. We are fully responsible for our joy and love if it was dependent on outside circumstances we'd all be screwed and that's why most of you feel screwed all the time (laughs) Mm -hmm. because we need to find this reservoir within ourselves so the subject once again if you just turn it on the radio that is is depression and i wrote this piece on that rainy day a couple of days ago depression is it a natural state in the shifting biorhythms Is it caused by the news, a seemingly helpless position, being brain-dead consumers in a feeding frenzy of earth resources? It's insulting to the intelligence. The pharmaceutical companies have a number of pills for this modern malady, with horrific side effects, mind you. Is depression a human state condition or a condition? I have a notion that dogs get down also. I'm feeling down, unloved, unappreciated. I'm feeling down. I don't have enough Yankee dollars. Depression. I have a beef with reality. Or is it a hereditary gene? Can it be the microwave emissions from the West Side? Hmm. Shall we just accept it as a part of life and stop dissecting it? Like it said, pain is a part of life and suffering is optional. Questions go on and on. But... uh, and then I came up with impression, the opposite. Impression. I'm impressed at the resilience of the human. Mm. How we embody paradox to the max. The entire range of artistic creativity impresses me. From music to food, to painting and poetry, architecture, sciences. And the gardens we co-create amazes me. The faces of children, the innocence. Just knocks my socks off. How we climb out of our own traps. That amazes me. There's hope yet. But that's all I could come up with. (laughs) Oh, it's perfect. So that was such a great example of perspective, of choosing where to look. Wasn't that fantastic? Is that our life and reality is fully based off of our perspective yes, and life yes. experiences. We can choose to continuously focus on the negative or we can choose to focus on what inspires us and amazes us. Yeah. Now, we've said it before in that we're giving pain respect is that when we actually are low or depleted of serotonin, it is truly harder to do these things. So what are the tools and techniques? One, take a look at how 
you're sitting? Are you slouching in the couch? Do you have a mindless show on? Are you hunched over? Are you grumpy? Whatever may be going on, and change your body position. Change the activity you're doing. I also said earlier, you know, hop in a cold shower. It's these things that totally reset you. Yep. And kind of get you out of your skin a little bit that may perk you up and can help boost you just opening up the tiniest door for you to, oh, I can be grateful. Oh, I can feel this. You know, everything is okay. And the light comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just got to, so we don't see the world the way the world is. We see the world the way we are. It's Mm. been said over and over again by all the greats. And I have a finishing piece that I'll read later. Everybody, the greats say, know thyself. We're all looking out. I'm seeing you, you're seeing me. We're speaking. We're on the radio. Um, Turn the mirror inward. Mm -hmm. There is no time. It's just this moment. And if we don't do it, nobody's going to do it for us. Exactly. No No psychiatrist, no doctor, Mm -hmm. no pill, no drug, new drug, old drug good bad drug it's it's not in any one thing and it's in everything mm-hmm. and but but like you said just now the source is you is me is all of us we are uniquely individually it all of us jesus said you can all do what i've done you know but providing we're clear mm-hmm. we all have that power mm-hmm. So Well, and let's just, we can all do what Jesus has done. Staying away from just religion is the power to heal and to live in grace and synchronicity. And he ate a really healthy food, you know, a simple diet, lots of plants. He gave, he was in service, giving, lifts our spirits, opens our hearts. A part of depression is that we're actually choosing to cling to our own misery. Isolated. Suffering is also getting trapped and getting identified and actually comfortable in our own suffering. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to actually get out of this because then it might mean I'm responsible. Then it might mean I actually have to do this and I'm maybe terrified of that. So we actually need to start to move out of that. And again, service is a great way to do that. And then, of course, being loving and gentle with ourselves. Jesus did tons of yoga and meditation and yep. introspection. And apparently trained in the highest uh, temples mm-hmm. and learned. <clears throat> there was a story in the Nine Faces of Christ that uh, the tribe, the Essenes at the time, they staged something. And one of the brothers actually got a broken arm and there was the elders weren't around. And so Jesus was there as a young man and they asked him to, you know, early on in his life to to heal it. And there is the the violet light that emits from the human that's advanced. (laughs) Let's not even call him Jesus. And then Mm -hmm, the light just put it all together because it's like getting in touch with the I- inner knowing, the inner body, that inner being that when, when you say, Kelly, uh, I've made it to the station or I'm doing a radio show, Kamran is doing it. Who is me? 85, 90 percent of me is bacteria and, and, and little people, you know, that aren't even human. What am I in charge of? You know, my heart's beating by itself. My breath... It's happening most of the time by itself. Kidney, liver, everything is doing its own function. And then yet I say, I'm, I'm in control. What am I in control of? <laughs> Basically, I think it's to choose to not say I'm tired because I just heard myself say I'm tired. I'm not tired. I'm creative. I'm a creative being. I can snap out of anything with a little help from my friends mm-hmm. or a song on the radio or, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or something so small that if I wasn't attentive, it'll just pass right over my head, you know? Exactly. So, and at the same time, like my, one of my points of being impressed about humans, we push it and push it and push it. And then like yourself, kick that low rock in the bottom and just come up because there's no other way. So we... It's like an artistic sickness to make hardship to then come up with great paintings and poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. I love just to touch briefly upon, you know, let's just say Jesus again, an advanced human being, spends time in deep suffering and pain and in the lowly places. 
If we understand the universe as a holograph, that nothing can be separated from itself, that we are all a part of the whole, then we can't get rid of our pain. I can't get rid of a negative experience. It's in me. It's happened. We have to go into it and feel it and, and experience mm. its wisdom. And it's when we actually do fearlessly go down. It's in the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell. We need to spiral down into these dark caves and find these beasts, this pain, this suffering. And there's always going to be help. There's always going to be support. And you you have the tools to defeat it. Once you get into it, you actually see exactly how it got created, where it came from, and how to heal it. An advanced human being is just connecting in with our consciousness, having this ability to heal. I'm smiling because another story of Jesus comes to mind. <laughs> I love Jesus. I just, one of those people, if I see him, I, I would just kiss his feet and hug him for eternity. Um, how Jesus would go to the leper colony colonies and kiss these lepers on the lips. I mean, that's a little too much. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I've never heard that story. Before. No, it's true. It's true. But, I mean, sit like you just but said, sitting I with know. the worst of mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. and still bringing light into it. Everything's consciousness oh and everything God. wants to be loved. You, everyone around you wants to be loved. That person you had a fight with, they will desperately just want to be loved. And <laughs> another saying that I've uh, wrote down and I read every now and then, the people who are hardest to love are the ones who need it the most. Mm -hmm. Kelly, last 25 minutes of our show and... Uh, I think we've covered some good grounds regarding these mm, universal issues of depression and pain and the opposite and some pathways into how we can come out of the pits of humanity into the heights of uh, the universal being that we are and and talking about is important feeling the pain is important coming out of it going back in it the whole dance continues I just sometimes picture where we are as living beings right now and how much life has happened before us mm. and possibly how much life is going to happen after us. You know, like we're just this little one flower in the middle of this infinite lay and uh, it's very important. It's like it's a gift that it's unrepeatable and yet it's just a dot in a series of infinite dots heading to God knows where. <laughs> well, I, I love what you said about having patience. So one of the things we're discovering on the journey to recovery is that we can't avoid our pain and it's actually there to show us exactly where we need to look and benefit and then just to have loving patience for what the process is maybe it takes us five minutes to really clear something and maybe it takes us five years so being able to sit with that and then the next part is that a lot of people have trouble actually seeing themselves one of the four faults that keeps us from realizing the mind or even being able to understand you know the patterns we're stuck in is that our mind is too close. We can't actually see it because we're always looking out. Something you touched upon a little earlier, we project onto reality. So if you want help trying to find the patterns or areas in your life that need healing, look at the people out there that trigger you. Look at the reoccurring drama and experiences you're having in your life because all of this, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, whether you like it or not, is coming from within you. A pattern that either you haven't owned, haven't accepted in yourself, don't want to acknowledge or still need to heal and still need to find forgiveness. Yeah. Now moving into these realms of the healing aspects, Forgiveness. Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for any pain that I may have caused you knowingly or unknowingly throughout all space and time. I love you. 
I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. When this is genuine and can truly heal, or for, when we can truly forgive, it brings deep healing. I always like to think of forgiveness like a cleaning lady in our own body. It just starts sweeping up all the toxins and yeah. cellular memories, and it completely transmuted like that violet light, returning yeah. it back yeah. to its form of perfection.